By day, it's a skateboard park, but look beyond the ramps, and it's clear that at night, this space beneath a Worcester Railroad bridge is, for some, as close as it gets to home. This summer, it probably swelled up to about 15 people. You'd go back there, you'd see people injecting into their friends' necks for them. Dan Meridian is sympathetic to the plight of his homeless neighbors, but he's frustrated, too. He and his fellow skateboarders built this park and try to keep it clean. It pretty consistently, steadily degrades to total chaos, garbage, vomit, feces, needles everywhere. Makeshift camps like this are becoming increasingly common in communities across Massachusetts, and they pose a thorny dilemma. How do you balance efforts at urban revitalization and help the homeless? We went over there. We uh, we talked to the individuals. The city of Worcester hopes the answer is in this room, where police, public works, and health and human services employees meet every week. Will you stay at night here? Yeah? And then hit the streets. They're called the Quality of Life Task Force, and on this day, they find signs of life in a thicket of woods, right behind these houses and just above the highway. How many people do you think live in this encampment? Looks like one, two, three. I believe that's used for storage. Dan Cahill leads the task force. He's a city inspector, and this is a health and safety hazard. On land, it turns out, owned by the state. You know, we can tell the state to pick this up right off the bat. You know, we don't want that. We want to try to make contact with these people. Say, hey, we need, you know, what do we need for services? Cahill says in the last year, his team has discovered dozens of these camps. The location often changes as their occupants seek to stay ahead of no trespass orders. The homeless are mostly under the radar. But to members of the task force, many are now familiar faces. Nice, thank you. No problem. Tony Munn says he's been sleeping in a shed since he lost his job last March. There's a place right down here, the, um, the Vernon Hotel. They rent rooms out, but I think it's like 150 a week or something, so I can't afford that. <laughs> yes, there's a need for more housing. But Worcester's Health and Human Services Commissioner says eliminating camps like this one ultimately requires tackling what are often the root causes of homelessness, addiction, and mental illness. How do we treat it as a disease? How do we bring the right treatment to um, to the folks that are suffering with this? There's no easy or quick solution, but Castile says connecting with the people who create these camps is a crucial first step. When you're actually coming out here and seeing that these are people's lives and these are people who deserve the same treatment as you and I do, that's when you start changing the whole process. Stephanie Lydon joins me now. Good for those workers, I'll tell you. Yeah. So what's going to happen to that encampment under the bridge? They've got to figure out who owns it. It looks like there's two owners. One of them might be the railroad. And so until they determine that, they can't do what they usually do, which is put out a, an order to leave. What's that thing? Oh, this is what they uh, they drop there. So if, if it's a... They city, meaning the, the... The quality of life team. Oh, when see. they find these encampments, they put one of these little uh, green cards. It has information on everything uh, from homeless services to addiction services, where to get food, those kinds of things. What happens when winter comes? What, what happens? Well, you know, that's what they're really in kind of almost crisis mode about. They've identified 133 people in Worcester who live on the streets. They have one shelter. It has 25 beds. So what right happens to the other 108 people? Well, they're, they're hoping to develop a consortium of other non Profits, faith-based organizations that will pick up the slack. So uh, how widespread are these? I mean, you see them you sort of dotting the landscape yeah. here and there, but it's sporadically. How widespread are these well, things? The Mass Coalition for the Homeless says they are in probably most communities. Often, as you say, out of the way. Sometimes, you know, Lowell, Brockton, we've heard about these camps that are visible and they create they create some consternation. But often they're just in wooded areas out of out of sight. You know, for those people who are angry at government for this or that, this is exactly the kind of thing government's supposed to be doing for people in need. It's great. Stephanie, thanks for bringing us the story. I appreciate You're welcome. It.